Hey everyone and welcome. Today we're tackling a leak code problem called find x sum of all k long subarrays i. It sounds a bit complicated but don't worry. We're going to break it down step by step into simple, understandable pieces. Let's get started. Alright, here's the official problem description. The main goal is to go through an array of numbers, look at every possible subarray or chunk of a specific length, which they call k, and for each of those chunks, we have to calculate a special value called the x sum. Then, we return all of those x sums in a final list. So, what on earth is an x sum? It's just a name for a sum we calculate using some very specific rules. First, we take our chunk of numbers, our subarray, and we count how many times each unique number shows up. Then, we find the x numbers that appear most often. The final x sum is just the total sum of only those most frequent numbers. Now you might be wondering, what happens if there's a tie? For example, what if two different numbers appear the exact same number of times? The problem has a specific tie-breaking rule for this. It says that if the counts are equal, the number with the bigger value wins. It's considered more important. So in this example on the slide, both 1 and 9 appear twice. But since 9 is bigger than 1, it gets a higher rank. There's one more special case we need to know about. What if our subarray doesn't even have x different kinds of numbers to begin with? For example, if x is 3, but our subarray only has two unique numbers. In that situation, the rule is simple. You just ignore all the frequency stuff and add up every single number in the subarray. That total is your x sum. Okay, let's walk through the first part of the example from the problem description. Our first window of six numbers is 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, and 4. First, we count emo. We have two ones, two twos, one three, and one four. We need the top two most frequent. The numbers 1 and 2 are tied for the top spot. According to our tiebreaker rule, the bigger number wins, so 2 is considered number 1, and 1 is number 2. So we keep all the 2s and all the 1s, add them together, and we get 6. That's our first answer. So how can we start solving this? The most straightforward way, often called the brute force method, is to just do exactly what the problem asks, over and over. We'd loop through the array, and for each possible starting position, we'd grab the next k elements. Then, for that little chunk, we'd do the whole process. Count frequencies, sort them, find the top x, and sum them up. The big issue here, is that it's really inefficient. We're recounting the same numbers again and again, in overlapping windows. There's a much smarter way. And that smarter way is a classic computer science pattern called the sliding window. Think of it like this. Instead of looking at each window as a brand new problem, we realize that one window is very similar to the next. To move from one window to the next, we just slide over by one spot. This means one number on the far left drops out, and one new number on the far right comes in. Instead of recalculating everything, we can just update our frequency counts for those two numbers. This is way, way faster. Okay, we've talked about the logic of the sliding window. Now let's see how this actually translates into code. I'll put the full Python solution up on the screen first. Don't worry if it looks like a lot at first glance, because right after this, we'll break down the most important parts together. Alright, here is the complete Python code for our sliding window solution. It might look a little dense, but the logic is split into two main parts, a helper function to do the actual x sum calculation, and the main part that handles the sliding window itself. Let's look at that helper function first. Okay, this helper function is the heart of the logic. It takes the current frequency counts as input, First, it checks for that special case. If we have fewer unique numbers than x, it just sums everything up and we're done. Otherwise, it sorts the numbers based on our two rules. First by frequency, from highest to lowest, and then for any ties, by the number's value, also from highest to lowest. After sorting, it picks the top x numbers, and then calculates the final sum by adding up all occurrences of just those chosen numbers. Now for the sliding part. We start by setting up the frequency counts for the very first window and calculating its x sum. Then, we loop through the rest of the array. In each step of the loop we identify the number that's leaving the window on the left. We decrease its count, and if the count hits zero, we remove it from our tracker completely. Then we look at the new number entering on the right and increase its count. With our counts updated, we just call our helper function again to get the x sum for this new window and add it to our answer list. We just repeat this until we reach the end of the array. So how efficient is this approach? For time complexity, we loop through the array once, which gives us a factor of n. Inside the loop, the most expensive operation is sorting the distinct elements in our window to find the top x. Let's say there are d distinct elements. 
sorting takes d log d time. So the total time is roughly n times d log d. For space, we just need to store the frequency counts for the numbers currently in our window, which at most would be k different numbers. So we call that order k space. All right, that covers the main solution in Python. As promised, for those of you who code in other languages, I'm about to show the full solutions for Java, C++, and JavaScript. I won't be breaking these down, so just pause the video on your language of choice to check it out. All right, as promised, here is the full solution in Java. You can pause the video here to take a closer look at the implementation. Next up, here is the C++ version of the solution. Again, feel free to pause and review the code. And finally, here is the solution in JavaScript. Hopefully, seeing it in a few different languages helps solidify the concepts. So let's quickly recap. First, when you see a problem with a complex definition like xsum, the best first step is to break it down into a simple checklist of rules. Second, whenever a problem mentions doing something for every subarray of a fixed length, your brain should immediately scream sliding window. It's almost always the most efficient approach. And finally, don't be afraid to use helper functions. They can make your code much easier to read and debug by separating the main algorithm, in our case, the sliding, from the detailed calculation logic. All right, before we wrap up, I want to quickly show you a personal project I built to solve a problem that always drove me crazy. It's an app called My Daily To Do. My biggest frustration with every other To Do app was retyping the same things every single day. Go to the gym, review code, work on the daily leap code problem. You know the drill. So I built my app around one simple but powerful idea, separating your routine tasks from your one-off tasks. Routine tasks, marked with the little refresh icon, automatically reset for the next day. One-off tasks, like ship new feature, get the little puff of smoke icon, and they disappear for good once you're done. This small change turns a dumb checklist into a smart scheduler. If that sounds useful, you can try it right now on the web. The link is in the description. And one more thing I wanna make super clear. Right now, as a thank you for being an early supporter, the app is 100% free. There are no ads and no subscriptions whatsoever. This means you get access to everything, including really powerful features like presets, which let you save entire task lists and load them with a single tap. Now, down the road, creating new presets will likely become part of a premium plan to help support the channel. But, and this is the important part, any presets you create now, while it's all free, are yours to keep and use forever. So it's the perfect time to check it out on the web, play with all the features, and build out your perfect setup at no cost. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more leap code easy, medium, or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Also, if you're looking for even more Leap Code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leap Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems, so if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this Leap Code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. If you want to support the channel, a few people have asked how I plan my solutions. I'm a big fan of sketching out the logic and data structures on a tablet before I code, it really helps. I've put affiliate links in the description to the tablet I use and a few other good options. Using those links doesn't cost you anything extra, but really helps me out. Or, if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.